Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of Havels India Limited, hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participants will be in the listen only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Renu Bate from IAFL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Rituja. A very good morning to everyone. On behalf of IAFL Securities, I would like to welcome everyone to the 4Q FY22 earnings call of Havels India. Today, the management is represented by Mr. Anil Rai Gupta, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Rajesh Kumar Gupta, Full Time Director, Finance and Group CFO, Mr. Amit Kumar Gupta, Full Time Director, Mr. Rajiv Goel, Executive Director, and other members of the leadership team. Uh, without taking much time, I would now hand over the call to Ms. Anilji for his opening comments. Thereafter, we can uh, take on to the QA. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Renu. Good morning, everyone. We hope everyone is staying safe. We will now have reviewed the results. We feel encouraged by operating performance with healthy value and volume growth across the segment. While the initial few weeks of the quarter four were impacted by COVID in demand, markets and slowdown in some construction activity, there was swift recovery in the latter half of the quarter. Timely onset of summer, and pent-up demand helped Lloyd register high revenue growth. Contribution margins continue to be impacted due to high material inflation and time lag in passing on increased costs. We expect gradual recovery here. We exited the year on a momentum and remain confident on sustaining the same. We will now proceed to Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, good morning. Thanks for taking my question. My first question is with respect to the volume growth that we would have seen uh, this year or the previous year. What kind of volume growth roughly that we would have seen across each segment? For the entire year, for each segment you are asking? Yes, sir. If I think these numbers, if you can specifically talk to the IR team, uh, that will be better because it may be difficult. Overall, it's around uh, 11 to 12 percent. 11 to 12 percent volume growth overall. Wow. Wow. And uh, with respect to price increase, uh, are there any further price increase that uh, we are likely to take across segments given the fact that uh, um, input costs have gone up uh, one leg in the last quarter? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, to some extent, uh, we are holding some price increases because there has been quite a unprecedented price increase in the last six to eight months. And uh, we, we are waiting to see the, uh, you know, medium term trend of these raw material prices. So, uh, you know, as you can see, even in the fourth quarter, we were expecting some uh, fight, but uh, the geopolitical situation was not conducive, and hence the raw material prices went up in the fourth quarter as well. So we've not entirely passed on the prices, and we will continue to wait for some more time to see how they behave. Got it, sir. And uh, what kind of growth that one can expect over the next one to two years uh, uh, that uh, we are looking at, uh, given that keeping in mind the real estate recovery, uh, the new product launches that we are doing, uh, the channel reach expansion, etc., that we are expecting to do, and they will be a thought from. I think overall we are positive on growth, uh, consumer side, real estate side, as well as uh, you know a lot of impetus from the government on in, in industrial and infra as well. And the 
Uh, capex cycles should also improve with uh, many industries doing better because of the commodity uh, cycle. So I think uh, overall demand should remain strong for the next one or two years. Uh, the only, uh, you know, uh, negative could be the high material inflation. So that is something which we need to watch out for. But otherwise, we are positive for good growth in the coming one or two years. Uh, early teen kind of volume growth is something that we, we will be gunning for over the next two years. Uh, yes, that's what something which you should expect. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naval Seed from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. First on uh, Lloyd. Uh, so there has been phenomenal uh, growth on top line. So if you can highlight uh, the way you stated last time, market share was 10%. So what would be your exit market share for uh, 4Q? And uh, uh, you know, given that your stated price hikes will not be uh, fully passed on, so at what level of revenues uh, one can expect uh, at least break even at the Lloyd level? So. You know, again, difficult to give market share figures at this present moment because we are still waiting for uh, the consumer research reports. Uh, but uh, we would say our primary sales uh, increased at a higher level, a little bit higher than the industry. So there could be some market share gains there as well. But I, I think overall the industry has done well because uh, of the last two years, uh, you know, pent up demand as well. And the summer is also uh, coming at the right time. So. I think overall industry has also done well. Uh, as far as uh, you know, uh, uh, margins are concerned, I think uh, you know just uh, not based on volumes, we are expecting uh, contribution margins also should improve to bring back profitability once the raw material prices stabilize. So while market shares and growth is extremely important, but I think uh, overall we need our contribution margins also to start kicking back. Uh, with the right um, you know, difference between revenue as well as cost price. Okay. Uh, if not market share, but can you share uh, what would have been the reach increase uh, in FI22 for Lloyd, distribution reach increase? I think uh, as we have uh, always said that over the last four or five years, the biggest investment that have, uh, Lloyd has made is in distribution outreach. Today we are present across the country in all kinds of segments, whether it is um, you know, uh, regional retailers, modern format retailers, distribution, uh, tier, two, tier two, tier three town, uh, and uh, since last one year, online as well. So, uh, you know, which was something which was not uh, uh, there with Lloyd. Havels was strong in online, but Lloyd was not there. So now it is, I would say, you know, just like Havels strategy, Lloyd is an only present uh, uh, product category. And AC is well established in terms of distribution outreach, but still work is going on in terms of increasing outreach for um, washing machines and refrigerators. So that's a work in progress. Sure. And second and last question is on ad spend. Uh, although in the previous calls you have stated ad, ad spend as a percentage of sales will normalize gradually. Uh, but we are seeing that you are able to control whenever, whichever quarter you are able to. So is it fair to assume that there are some structural changes which has happened uh, and they are still giving you a similar share of voice at lower spend also, be it, you know, uh, that you might have gone heavy on digital with lower cost. So hence, uh, share of voice is not impacted. So, so uh, uh, and your overall cost is kind of, uh, underlying cost is kind of controlled. Well, I think the last two years, you can't really see it uh, as normalized years for the industry as well as for Havels. And, you know, share of voice was not impacted, mainly because the industry was also not spending uh, very high on this. Uh, digital spends have increased, but we, in this coming year, uh, especially during the season, we do see uh, normalized advertising promotion levels coming back. Got it. Uh, thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I want my questions are on Lloyd actually. Uh, one, I wanted to check what kind of difference uh, was there on primary and secondary sales in Q4, and and if you could comment on the inventory levels in the channel at this point. And the other bit I wanted to understand was, uh, you know, what some thoughts on how you intend to revive profitability in this business. Uh, you know, what should be our reasonable expectation on margins here? This quarter was quite big on top line. 
uh, but definitely there were challenges on profit. Uh, so on a strategic level, how are you looking to balance uh, market share growth versus margins in the AC category? And uh, the third bit was around, uh, you know, if you could also share some color on consumer response to washing machine and refrigerator, uh, you know, launches, uh, how are they tracking versus your plan? Uh, you know, how is your price and distribution positioning for these products? And, and, and any, any sense on what kind of revenue contribution uh, one could expect from these segments over the next two to three years? Thank you. Right, so uh, as far as primary and secondary uh, goes, I think this is generally a very good season uh, and uh, the inventory uh, in the system is uh, at a lower level. Um, if you look at the uh, primaries, they start getting built from November onwards and uh, there is generally shelf filling till the month of February when, and the March, April is the season where you know, secondaries start happening in a big way. I would say that um, you know end of April, which is uh, uh, the inventory levels in the trade are not very high uh, because the summer season has gone well. As far as profitability is concerned, I think uh, you know generally Havel has always been in the strategy of profit and growth, and uh, you know that will continue to remain the strategy for Lloyd as well. However, over a period of time, this will come. Uh, the focus right now is to establish a decent market share uh, in the air conditioning category, which we, uh, as we as we said, we had lost out a little bit in the last two or three years because of uh, the re-establishment of distribution, the, the brand positioning, but now things are coming back. So the focus will continue to remain there. And uh, the profitability will come over a period of time, but uh, you know the raw material prices also need to help there a little bit. The investments in the brand, the distribution would continue to happen, including R&D and new product launches. And the third question about uh, refrigerators and washing machines, that also is uh, doing, uh, I would say, doing extremely well in the sense not so much big in numbers because AC is also growing very fast. But at least their response to from the consumer as well as from the trade is extremely positive. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So two questions again on Lloyd. Firstly, you know, the performance was pretty stellar, right? I mean, we did like almost 1,000 crores in top line. Could you help us understand what drove this performance in terms of product mix uh, for the quarter or the full year, whatever is comfortable? And uh, where are we in terms of washing machine and rest in terms of, you know, product portfolio, in terms of SKU presence? Uh, and, you know, lastly on Lloyd, is basically, uh, you know, could we understand uh, what could be a peak revenue possibility for Lloyd given the current capacities both in-house and outsource across, you know, all categories, AC, washing machine, reps, because, you know, this number of 1,000 crores was pretty large. Obviously, it's seasonal, but uh, overall, you know, how should can we... You, sorry, can you repeat the entire question, please? Uh, there was some disturbance uh, in the call. Okay, I'll repeat that. So essentially on Lloyd, uh, you know, 1,000 crore number was, you know, a pretty strong number. What I wanted to understand is, could you help us understand a bit of product mix uh, for the quarter or the full year, whatever is comfortable? And uh, between washing machines and revs, you know, where are we in terms of product portfolio, uh, SKU, you know, launches, and uh, what would what is the peak revenue for Lloyd, which is possible given current capacities across AC, wash, and revs? Okay, um, as far as the, the number for the quarter is concerned, I think um, uh, the revenue mix was almost, ACs was almost 80-85% uh, uh, in this current quarter. Um, and uh, the uh, SKU availability or the SKU uh, launches in terms of washing machines and refrigerators is a continuous process. Uh, it will take its own time, but uh, you know the company is really investing very heavily in developing new product categories. And I'm hopefully by the end of this current financial year, uh, we would have a comprehensive range both in washing machines and refrigerators, and most of it will be in-house manufactured uh, or at least uh, in-house developed. Um, as far as the uh, air conditioning capacity is concerned, we we have a 1 million capacity, a world-class facility at Milo. We are setting up another capacity uh, in South, uh, in Sri City. So that should be operational by the end of the financial year. So uh, so we are looking at, um, you know, expanding capacity in Lloyd. Sir, so 
so any comments on the peak revenue possible given the existing capacity right now whatever is available today no, i said we are manufacturing 1 million uh, we we can manufacture 1 million and of course there is some some bit of outsourcing which is the kind of product that we don't manufacture so that's not really a big constraint got sir and lastly on the other category for havel it's almost like 750 crore of sales now for the full year uh, could you help with the sales mix here like top three line items or a new evolving category which might be separated out of others now because that's a large number going forward so a large number of that is uh, electric motors um, and then uh, followed by water purifier uh, water purifiers and uh, uh, domestic pumps and, uh, and uh, personal grooming as well as solar so it's a mix of five product categories and the largest would be motors right Okay, I'll just do the Okay, I'll come back in with you. Thank you so much for answering my questions. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chiranjit Singh from the ESP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, first of all, congratulations on a you know good set of numbers in a very tough environment. So my first question is firstly on the ECD segment. Uh, so if you look at you know the segment has shown very strong growth on a very high base. And if you can, you know, give more granular details on the, you know, category wise, and from here on, how we should see the growth in this, uh, you know, segment coming in. And we have also seen a very good, you know, QQ improvement in the margin. If you can also, you know, explain that, uh, what has led to the improvement in the margin in the ECD segment. That's my first question. Well, I think uh, if you look at the segment, you know, fans came back strongly with a good season coming in um, and all the product categories, appliances continues to be a fast growth category, water heaters uh, did well. This is a very low quarter for water heaters. Um, and in terms of margins, we, I think at the third quarter conference call also we had mentioned that there was an unprecedented uh, cost increase which we would pass on over a period of time. In the fourth quarter, some cost increases were passed on. Uh, so the, uh, we expect the margins to uh, continue to, you know, improve. Um, and the growth is uh, generally. I've also mentioned that you know consumer demand continues to remain strong. Our distribution continues to increase. So we are expecting ECD uh, should be a good growth driver for the company. Okay, sir. And. Sir, on uh, on the lighting side, you know, uh, while the growth has come back, but there were earlier, you know, that B two B side was, you know, missing in this particular category. So, when touch upon, you know, B two B versus B two C in lighting, how those two, you know, uh, parts of the market are behaving? So, uh, you know, out of lighting, almost one third of our business is B two B, and uh, it is uh, slower growth. It is uh, as compared to the B two C segment. But it is, uh, you know, we we don't we try not to get into you know very price competitive uh, tenders and all that. So it's a it's a very focused business for us to go into you know architectural segment and uh, so I think it's a it's a high margin business uh, just like the consumer business for us. Yeah, sir. So if I may just squeeze in another question, you know, on the distribution side, uh, if you can, you know, touch upon, you know, in terms of the distribution channel growth next year, what's the kind of expectation which we have in terms of adding more touch points or getting into more new geographies? Uh, that's my last question, sir. Thank you. So this is a continuous activity. Uh, you know, we are uh, getting deeper into a smaller town. Uh, the the not so strong markets like southern markets or western markets, our presence is becoming uh, stronger there. You know, distribution also these days include uh, you know all kinds of presence, whether it is uh, CSD, whether it is modern format, uh, online, everywhere our presence is continuing to enhance. So it's a continuous activity for the company on all product categories. Uh, thanks, sir. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you for taking my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Bera from Lomara. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is on the AC. Like you have said, there has been some bit of under recovery uh, in the. Siddharth, but your voice is not that clear, sir. Uh, is it better now? Yeah, yeah okay. So my first question is on the uh, AC. So like, sir, you said that there has been some. Uh, 
bit of under recovery so will it be possible to indicate uh, i mean from current levels uh, how much uh, price increase you need to take uh, for you to reach your double digit contribution margin uh, levels uh, for the segment uh, going ahead uh i think uh, we'll have to as i said you know the rental prices are at a high level and you know we we want to see this season go off uh, and then over a period of time hopefully the rental prices also should stabilize and then we should see contribution margins coming back but there has been a lag between the cost increase and the price increase thank you the next question is from the line of mayur patel from ifl asset management please go ahead hi thanks for the opportunity just a small question actually two questions uh, first uh, can you give some uh, break up or at least uh, you know some idea about uh, the volume growth in ecd uh, segment Yeah, just hold on for a second. Okay. Approximately around fifteen uh, percent. Oh, and rest is mainly uh, due to price hike. That's right. And uh, just a, one related question, uh, Mr. Gupta. Um, you know, given the kind of uh, price hikes we have seen across fans, the water heaters, and the appliances, and the entire ECD segment. Uh, do you see these price hikes have started to dent underlying volume growth volume demand or the demand remain healthy in your view i think at the present moment the demand is healthy mainly because of you know these products there was some pent up demand because last two summer seasons were uh, low the real estate segment is doing uh, well but it's i would still say that you know these are you know unsustainable kind of prices especially for copper aluminum steel and i think hopefully over a period of time these should start stabilizing and hence uh, you know uh, we should uh, hope to uh, the demand continues to remain strong but uh, these are really very high price levels so i think uh, right now we're not seeing an effect on demand but long term if it remains it could start affecting the demand okay There's one more question, if I can squeeze in. Uh, in terms of Lloyd, clearly a blockbuster performance uh, in terms, and it's uh, clearly one can undoubtedly say there is some recent market share gain uh, which we have garnered. Is it possible to give? Uh, you know, who would be losing market share in the industry of late? Well, I think uh, you know I, I mentioned uh, at the start of the call that we we also anticipate that we may have lost out some market share in the last two or three years because of you know re-establishment of the distribution network and uh, repositioning of the brand as well and uh, you know the factory coming up and you know sourcing going down uh, in the network being expanded so. i believe that we have regained our market share and uh, maybe a little bit of gain somewhere but uh, you know the industry itself has grown very well because of the pent up demand so i think uh, overall put together uh, you know it's difficult to say that you we may have you know uh, difficult to point out uh, if anybody would have lost out everybody would have done well in this kind of a growth scenario sure thank you all the best thank you Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, you may rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Rahul Gazri from Hightong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. I have two questions. Um, you've indicated high capex uh, for this year. You know, if uh, I think that number was around seven to eight hundred odd crore rupees. uh could you indicate uh, where exactly is this money being spent you indicated shri uh, shri city <coughs> sorry shri city facility will be operational by end of this year which are the other areas that you are looking at spending money that is the first uh, question so it is uh, primarily because last year we saw increased capacity in uh, 
washing machines uh, and uh, cables and wires, but we also anticipate more capacity increase in cables and wires, a new completely a new facility in South for air conditioners. So currently it will be dominated by um, air conditioners and uh, cables and wires. And this will be 700 to 800 crore rupees in this year. That's right. Approximately it, it may trickle some of it to the next year, but we are anticipating uh, you know, all the projects to start at least uh, during the present year. Okay. Uh, so the second question is on Lloyd's. Uh, you know, uh, could you highlight which is the area, um, geographical areas that have done well for y'all? You know, whether which markets have really kicked uh, for y'all uh, in this particular quarter, and I how much price much increase? Was, yeah, pretty much, much it was price? all over. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, please. Sorry. Um, and uh, how much price increase have you actually taken through this year? I think if we look at Lloyd in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, pretty much all the areas started doing well. There were certain weaker markets of Lloyd, uh, especially Eastern region or Western uh, Maharashtra, where we started uh, getting a lot of traction in this year. So, uh, so I would say that from a primary sales point of view, all the markets did well. North started doing better. North and East started doing better from a seasonal point of view and tertiary sales. Uh, in the month of March and April, and I think now South is doing uh, better. South had uh, uh, lower tertiary sales in the month of March and April, but it started doing well now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Luari from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, uh, can you help us understand the price hike, what you have taken in fourth quarter, uh, and uh, if any, in the current quarter? So most of the price hikes were taken during the third quarter, and some amount of uh, price hikes in Switchcare and ECB in the fourth quarter as well. Um, uh, as, uh, as far as Lloyd is concerned, the price hikes mostly were taken by the end of December. Uh, would you be able to quantify, sir? In terms of for the year, if we take it lawyer, it's almost about 10%. For FI22, understood. And the second question I had, um, is it possible to give some color with respect to uh, fans, market share, what we had in FI22? Uh, no. Got it. And just a clarification, in one of the interviews, uh, you had mentioned that you're looking at exports going up to 10%. Uh, just thought of checking, you know, uh, uh, if you could elaborate a bit on that. Yeah, so this is a medium term strategy for uh, Havel. We want exports to uh, you know, go up to that level. Uh, actually, the growth in uh, exports almost was close to about 40-45% in this year. And we continue to believe that this will uh, be a strong growth segment for Havel in the coming time. We're seeing good traction both in switch care, uh, Loy uh, products also, because now we are manufacturing in house uh, cables and wires. So, all product categories uh, are showing good traction. So, we are expecting decent growth in the coming years. Got it. Thank you so much. I'll come back in this queue, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renjit from Mahindra Money Life Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, just uh, uh, on this uh, working capital, like when I see we have uh, had a decent enough uh, cash flows, uh, but uh, when I see the creditors, creditor days have increased by five days. So just wanted to understand your thought process, like despite having a good cash flows, uh, why there is a delay in terms of uh, paying the suppliers or is there any other strategy towards that or is it just a there, there is no delay in payments to any vendor and that has never been the strategy of travel um, and uh, all the vendors are paid on due date this is just normalized uh, level you know it depends upon the product mix the kind of sourcing that we are doing inventory reviews okay and uh, also there has been a substantial reduction in inventory so is that we, we should uh, read that the dealers have been uh, stocked up uh, for this summer. Uh, so, uh, will we see this? Is that also a timing thing? 
No, I think, uh, you know, you're comparing with last year, March, and then there was anticipated uh, inventory increase for the summer season. So, uh, so that is not there in this season. So there is, it looks like a substantial uh, reduction. But there is, you know, basically whatever reduction is there is poor efficiency. It's not, not really something which is uh, dependent upon the season for the current year. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal, Bira, Vishal Biraya from Max Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, this uh, awesome green air conditioner that we've seen, would it have been supported by giving higher margins to the readers for better credit terms or higher subvention uh, for our products, uh, higher financing? Uh, anything that you could specify as to why was uh, what, what led to the spurt in sales over the last uh, uh, over the last three four months? Thank you. Uh, as I said, three or four reasons. First of all, there is no change in policy for uh, Lloyd in terms of distribution, as far as distribution in terms of payment terms or anything is concerned. Uh, three of one, we said, you know, the distribution revamp which happened over the last few years. That was fully in operation because, you know, last two seasons were not good. This was fully in operation. The uh, positioning, brand positioning had commissioned, uh, had happened. Uh, the plant, which was commissioned in early Jan 2020 or, or uh, December 2019, was fully in operation in, for the first year because, you know, last year we could not operate it fully. Uh, plus, you know, a pent-up demand in the industry, so the industry overall doing well and the summer season kicking. So a lot of reasons for this uh, growth in Lloyd in the coming last quarter. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, any sort of down trading that you are seeing, uh, because we, we've, over the years, we've seen a trend of premiumization. So because of higher uh, prices of the products across, is there any sense of uh, down trading either in fans uh, or in uh, Lloyd? I would say in both the product categories, we've actually seen a little bit of upgrading with, uh, towards more energy efficient products and because products becoming, uh, you know, more expensive. Uh, so people are going in for a little bit higher, you know, uh, one-time costs and then, you know, focusing more on the electricity consumption. So we've seen some, uh, you know, good improvement towards, high, you know, we see Almost 70 to 80 percent is inverter-based uh, air conditioners now. Uh, we also see um, even the fact that people are going in for high efficiency. So uh, even in France, we've seen that kind of an upgrade, uh, up, uh, uptrend because of the high cost. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Axis Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Nitin, but your voice is uh, a little low. Can you please speak a little louder? Yeah, I'm audible now. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so, sorry, so we're again asking on Lloyd. Uh, so, generally, you said, you know, there is a lead lack of a price hike, uh, which should reflect going forward. But uh, given the volumes which we have done and as you said, there's a market share gain. Uh, there is only a concept of operational leverage. So what I'm trying to understand here is at a 960 crore, we're doing a 2.8% EBIT, uh, and volumes would have been grown significantly for you Q1, Q. How much impact did you see on, on the commodity which really didn't lead any increase in profitability? So either we are gaining market by, uh, you know, going very aggressive in pricing uh, and trying to gain that market, which if season doesn't go well in any year, then it you know pushes back very fast uh, to the same category. So just wanted to understand is first the impact of commodity, specifically on this particular category, which didn't lead to you increasing profitability. And uh, uh, is there some aggressiveness in pricing which is leading to this market share gain? Well, the entire, uh, you know, impact on profitability is due to the aggressive uh, uh, increase in costs and uh, not passing it on entirely to the market. And this is not necessarily to gain market share, but this is to actually ensure that, you know, the demand does not get affected uh, because of unprecedented price increases in this market. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an industry trend. 
But Lloyd is at a different position because we still are at a lower market share and lower volume, and hence mm -hmm. it will take time for the operating leverage to kick in, uh, which is you know, uh, which when we start sustaining these kind of volumes over a long mm -hmm. period of time and the growth continues, that's when we start seeing operating leverage kicking in. But at these levels, the, the kind of price increases, uh, because of in any way lower gross margins in this uh, product category. So, you know, you really can't um, uh, get a whole lot of operating leverage uh, mm -hmm. if the raw material price uh, costs go up so much. Getting it. And generally, uh, uh, in the uh, next quarter, if, as you said, Lloyd has taken a 10% price increase on an annual basis, uh, if we take 10, 15% more, given the season is good, uh, we should be back to 7, 8% a bit, in your view, or there would be some more pressure on the commodity here? No, so you're saying 10, 15% more price rise in the season, that's not possible. Got it. No, because I'm coming from your comment only that demand is very strong, but we can't take the price increase because demand will go down. So that's why I was trying to catch where is exactly the problem is. If demand is everything is good. Yeah, so demand no, is, will be elastic to this kind of a price. Increase. Got it. Got it. Clear, sir. Clear. Thank you very much, sir, as always. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pravin Sahar from Edelweiss Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking the question. The question is related to the volume growth, uh, as you had mentioned, for a year, 11 to 12 percent. Uh, so, can you give uh, in the uh, you know pre-COVID era, how was uh, overall volume growth for the company? Yeah, we'll have to come back to you on this. Uh, or you can uh, you know uh, uh, what's the element of pent-up demand in this 11 to 12 percent of uh, volume growth in the FY22? I don't know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Joshi from ICICI Security. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, uh, uh, is the volume growth momentum uh, remain strong in April also? Uh, that is one. And uh, secondly, uh, most likely there will be uh, star ratings on fans soon. So, uh, well, <clears throat> has also introduced multiple premium fans. Uh, so, do you see there is a significant scope to gain market share? Other mm -hmm. unorganized, and even some of the organized players are also behind the curve in terms of uh, new product launches or uh, uh, getting the uh, BLDC fan rights at right price points. So, do you see a significant scope to gain market share in uh, this? That is, uh, and third is uh, just on the clarification required on volume growth. So, first of all, is it uh, value weighted uh, volume growth, or is it based just based on the number of units sold, irrespective of price point? Uh, means, uh, means basically, is the change in value mix and change in uh, premiumization stroke down trading? getting captured in volume growth or it's getting captured in price rate growth? Yeah, that's it. Generally, the momentum continues to remain strong after the fourth quarter, and uh, we hope that this continues to remain strong. Uh, I would assume that most of the companies, organized companies, would be ready for the energy efficiency change, uh, and uh, that, that should not lead to a massive change in the market structure or market, uh, market share structure. So we would assume, hopefully, you know, with the cost increases based on the uh, energy efficiency, I, I really, I, I hope that the unorganized sector doesn't win any market share. Hopefully it should not, but, you know, this is all prices go up um, uh, too much. So to answer your question, I don't see a major disruption in market shares uh, with the energy efficiency changes. Um, third question, I, I really haven't really understood. Maybe you can get back to our IR department and, you know, just get some numbers on that. Does that answer your question, Mr. Anirudh? Yes, yes, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitlani from SPM Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one question on the white goods uh, uh, segment. 
now we this segment is dominated by the korean mncs and we are seeing some of these chinese uh, mnc giants also looking to gain entry and spending pretty large sums of capital uh, in this space and spend billions of dollars on r&d so uh, for hevels to be successful uh, uh, in this segment uh, what Uh, I, uh, is the strategy is it uh, to differentiate on the cost to differentiate on the the technology front and uh, where do you see uh, uh, avils on a three four year basis and what's what's the kind of uh, sustainable profitability is there in your uh, 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 planning that we see a reasonable return on capital on this segment. So your first part of the question was is very interesting. And now again, you come to on to numbers of you know profitability. But uh, no, seriously, I think uh, you know Havel is probably the one of the few companies who has proven that they've uh, stood against the large multinationals in terms of whether it's manufacturing or quality or or technology in any product category. This uh, you know be it lighting, be it uh, switchgear. you know where there are large multinationals who are, who are spending you know as in your words billions of dollars um but uh, i think you know that's a long term strategy or play that havel has taken for lloyd as well that we will continue to invest big time in four major things one is technology two manufacturing three brand and four distribution and that we believe that you know sustained investment and the right strategy behind all these four things will definitely lead to you know a, a reasonable position for lloyd in the market i would not say that you know we will be the dominant players and we are never not dominant players even in electric energy but uh, at least in the 4 5 years we should be a very reasonable player um, in this industry as well and that would that would lead to uh, you know a decent return on capital for this business Uh, is the uh, i mean the target return on capital uh, on mid teens uh, over a 4 5 years a reasonable expectation or, or it will be an aggressive expectation on a 4 5 year basis no i think uh, you know we would be definitely expecting at least that much okay great uh, uh, thank you so much for taking my questions thank you well The next question is from the line of Pulkit Patni from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for taking my question. It's related to the one Bhavan asked. I just want to understand again over the next three to four years, what do you think are the gaps in the portfolio which we would want to focus on, and secondly, how would we want to do it? Just uh, you know, given we have two and a half thousand crore of cash in the books. would we want to do it on our own or are we likely to look at uh, you know some sort of mna so just a strategy over 3 to 4 years in terms of what more we could do in terms of portfolio product segments etc etc i think in every business of havel there is enough of uh, you know opportunity to grow categories you know just let's take you we take lloyd uh, there is immense potential to grow on the other consumer durables and air conditioners and their uh, you know capital allocation will continue to happen uh, you take consumer durables electric consumer durables there is enough opportunity in appliances uh, in fans to grow categories to grow uh, you know uh, the distribution inside uh, to uh, give us a sustained growth for the coming years lighting segment itself even in professional lighting there is huge opportunity to grow into new categories uh, you know uh areas like stadium lighting museum lighting so so many opportunities are there for growth in every category and i can't name all of them including cables and wires so where in every business category there is organic growth opportunity uh where company would continue to put in capital as well as we are always open to look at more um you know adjacencies uh, within the business or very close to the business and hence uh, uh, in organic opportunities are always constantly evaluated but then you know as somebody asked this question we are also quite focused on the right capital allocation where at least in the next 5 to 10 years of any business or acquisition uh, we do expect uh, the shareholders to expect a decent return on capital understood sir 
And so, and so just uh, re- related to this, so what I understand from your answer is that there are no real big gaps. It's only enhancing of the existing product portfolio. So uh, can we expect anything in terms of mobility, et cetera, from the company on the electronic side anytime or, or nothing on that front? Uh, at this moment, it will be too early to say, to comment anything on that. Sure, that's useful. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Jain from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Ashish Jain, please Hello. go ahead with the question. Your line is unmuted. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, I have two questions. Uh, one, housekeeping. Uh, uh, what is a, uh, what are the growth in AC revenues for us on a YY basis in this quarter? Sorry, uh, sorry, Ashish, as I said, almost 80 to 85 percent of the revenues for the quarter were air conditioned. So you can say sizable growth of air conditioning in this quarter. Okay. So secondly, from a margin standpoint, you know, you did touch upon uh, that this, there could be some under recovery on the commodity side. Is it possible to quantify in your assessment what is the you know blended under under recovery today? And also, given the strong demand momentum that is there, are we kind of contemplating price hike? Maybe you know uh, in the uh, next few weeks or so, or uh, or there's a longer wait and watch policy on on pricing side. If you're specifically talking about air conditioners, I think uh, you know pretty much this season will be over by the end of this quarter. So you know, uh, even if there are more price hikes in the coming times, uh, there might not be a major you know uh, impact. As well as uh, you know, again, energy um, rating changes are coming, taking in from the first of July, which would anyway. You know, alter the price structure because of the. Uh, so I think there will be a wait and watch uh, till the end of the first quarter. Okay. And, and so the the same thing in the in a, in a core uh, consumer durable business, the margin right. under recovery today, uh, and are we contemplating a price hike at some point of time? So that's that's very similar. Again, you know, even in the consumer durable side, most of it is stands, and you know, first, this is the season, the first quarter, you know. Uh, after that, the energy rating uh, kicks in. So, so a lot of changes are happening around the first quarter end. So, so, if I can just, you know, persist on this one, like the point which I wanted to understand was, uh, you know, input cost is kind of high. Price hikes, we have not taken much. Uh, advertising cost will definitely go up, like you indicated earlier. So, so this, uh, are we kind of look- sorry for stopping you? We have taken considerable price increases, but don't go just by quarter to quarter. Look at the entire year; there have been considerable price increases, but it has not matched the kind of raw material price increases which has happened in just in the last three or four months. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, got it, sir. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhu Babu from Canada HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. So just on Lloyd's, uh, if it continues to see a good traction, so will it dilute the overall margin profile of the company? Because uh, the, as of now, the margin profile of Lloyd's is much lower. And second is on the exports, uh, which are the sub-segments we are targeting, and with the current kind of container cost, uh, would that be an impact on the strategy? Thanks. The only... So what you asked on the margin profile, uh, definitely, I think there is a product mix. And uh, so I think, as, as we mentioned earlier also, as the margin profile improves, I think it will also improve the overall level. But as of now, yeah, this is a fact. So there is a portfolio mix. And as, as Lloyd increases, there will be some dilution. But we expect over a period of time, I think, we will gravitate to our uh, normal, uh, as I said, whole, as a whole. And your second question on export, what categories are we targeting? Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. So uh, pretty much uh, the whole portfolio, uh, uh, but you see we are very strong in switch gear. Uh, now we are trying to make Lloyd, uh, particularly the AC category, is a big category because they are the dominant player is China, and we believe that China plus one could work uh, for for Lloyd in particular. So all categories will be in focus: cables, uh, uh, ACs, and and switch gear. And as we said, our 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 intent is there should be. 10% of of hours, which we believe is, uh, is something reasonable to expect in a few years. Okay, sir. Thanks and all. Thank you. The 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ केयर हरीश पांड्या फ्रॉम आईसीआईसी प्रोडेंशियल लाइफ इंश्योरेंस प्लीज गो अहेड uh thank uh, uh the the I have just one question so uh the question is that uh, in summer related products that is fans coolers and acs probably uh, the demand uh, seems to be uh, i mean uh, looks good because of say very harsh summer and two years pent up demand but so x the summer portfolio are we seeing any slowdown where it's a business as usual or where demand is not very skewed uh so are we seeing any uh, any impact on the demand well uh, i think difficult to uh, say as of now as you said the momentum is there uh, which is reflecting pretty much all categories so is here if you see because of there was some construction related restrictions in the first few uh, weeks uh, of this uh, q4 uh, so i think there was some dampening effect on that but that we believe also be apart from the harsh summer there is also a fact there is a real straight up cycle So I think that is also a bit of a tailwind for other non-summer related products. So in general, we may not single out that only the only the summer related products are growing. I think there is a there is a good growth in other products as well. Yes, the summer related products because maybe base also and because of the pent up, the growth is much higher than others. uh okay just so just clarification actually what i wanted to understand is that in if there is any slowdown because of this inflation i mean across companies or across sectors uh, it may not be visible in such this uh, summer related products because there is a pent up and there is hard summer so probably non summer products would be a right indicator to understand whether how the demand trends are so that if anything is visible and just one follow up to this uh, uh, from your answer uh is that after this steep inflation are we seeing any slowdown in b2b or any construction related activities i mean demand from that side uh, so slower inquiry or say some orders or inquiries getting delayed something of that sort well some delay effect will definitely be there but something we need not see something which because the people have been also waiting for years and sometimes they do believe that some deferment could be there but not not beyond that so As of now, we do not expect a significant dent, but there is something, something to be washed out. Uh, but as of now, as we speak, uh, things seems to be reasonably uh, well placed, even for non-summer related products. Okay, understood. Uh, sir, thanks a lot, and all the best to the team. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Encred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so, assuming Lloyd, you know, the raw material prices stay where they are, and I believe that Lloyd will eventually take a price hike over next three to six months uh, for different categories depending on the season. Uh, could we say that fiscal 23 would be a bit break-even year? I think we will see this Q4 of last year. I think difficult to predict what will happen in four quarters of next year. So, I think let's party for some time and maybe discuss it again after a few quarters. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranjit from Mahindra Money Life Mutual Fund. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah, uh, sir. Just wanted to reconfirm on that. Seven uh, hundred to eight hundred crore is the capex we are looking for. FY twenty three, or it will be spread over twenty three and twenty four. Twenty three. Twenty-three. Okay, and how much will be for this room AC in that? I think taking everything together will be seven eight hundred. It could be three hundred, three fifty for AC. Okay, and the rest will be largely for cables, cables, cables and wires and other miscellaneous. You see, we already have hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred core regular capex as well. Okay, okay, sure. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaur Harish Pandya from ICICI Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity again, sir. Just one quick follow-up uh, on the margin side. Uh, as we saw some, uh, I mean, sharp inflation, say after this uh, Ukraine-Russia conflict. But uh, in, in the recent past, we have seen it softening. Uh, 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 so, are we? Uh, so, if this trend continues, so uh, uh, will we need? uh price hike so i just want to understand say like, when we ended q3 fy22 this december 31st uh, even at those levels uh, uh, was there a need to uh, uh, hike the prices or so this 
or till that time we had already passed on the price and this increased inflation is just because of this ukraine russia war so good question in fact in the uh, you know when we entered the third quarter we were anticipating further price increases but the raw materials spent further up they have uh, you know come down a little bit but only in the last uh, couple of weeks and you know they are very choppy right now so it's very difficult to predict what they will remain uh if if it continues to keep coming down then hopefully for the price increases may not be required but let's wait and see but at current current prices we need a price hike at yeah, a certain level. in certain product categories okay okay sir can you just uh, clarify those categories which require which doesn't require whichever you are comfortable yeah, definitely air conditioners is a clear indication but even in products like fan and uh, some lighting and appliances we will definitely need even at these current levels okay okay thanks a lot thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen as this was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to mr enu bait for closing comments um thank you rutuja um on behalf of iif securities i would like to thank all the participants and the management for their time uh before we close the call any closing uh, comments or remarks from your side anil ji nay thank you very much renu uh, for organizing this call we you know we i would say that you know while we are very positive about the demand scenario going forward but it all uh, a lot of this, uh, it depends upon the volatility of the raw materials so let's hope that these uh, you know positive signs that we are seeing continue to be thank you very much thank you thank you everyone thank you on behalf of ifl securities limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines